A Florida middle school student stole $10,000 from her grandparents and passed it out to the kids at school. A one-legged Florida man known as Ponce de Leon was arrested. A Florida teenager won a competition by capturing 28 pythons. A Florida man named Danger ran an unlicensed recovery house. And a Florida man told the police that he's allowed to carry meth. Just call the FBI. They'll tell you. These are the weird stories for Friday on Weird AF News. They are all out of the state of Florida. Because on Friday on Weird AF News, we only do weird news from Florida. It's Florida Friday. Weird AF News. The weekend's here. A Florida middle school student stole thousands from her grandparents and gave it out to the kids at school. (laughs) A real-life Robin Hood here. Stealing from the rich and giving to the poor. Brave, brave Sir Robin. The Marion County Sheriff's Office says uh, this is true. A 14-year-old student at Lake Weir Middle School broke into her grandparents' safe, stole about $13,500 in cash, This is half of her grandmother's life savings, by the way, which is all she has after she sold her house. How did she break into the safe, though? Like, I picture, like, a child with a drill, and you know, like in one of those bank heists. They probably just left it open, I assume. I mean, how does a young girl get into a safe like that unless she knew the code or got a hold of it somehow? The sheriff's office says that she showed up to school with all this cash and started handing it out to people at school. It says people, so maybe the janitor and the lunch lady got some cash as well. I love it. This girl's like, who needs stimulus money? I got some stimulus money. You want a stimmy? You get a stimmy. You get a stimmy. Meet me at my locker if you want some Hurricane Ian relief funds. I got them all, a pile of cash in my locker. Now, they interviewed a parent in this story. It's not the parent of brave, brave Sir Robin that handed out all that money to the needy. It's a parent of a child that received some of, some of that stimmy that day. Apparently, the parents got a call at the end of the day from school. Uh, they were advised to check their child for cash, ask them if they have any extra money and where they got it. And this particular parent said, yeah, you know, I con- confronted my child about it. She said... Yeah, a kid at school asked me if I wanted $100 and then gave it to me. Uh, The parent was very concerned, thought that this must be stolen, wanted nothing to do with it. The parent is quoted as saying, I really hope it gets recovered, all this cash, because that's so devastating. I feel really bad for the family. Now, given the nature of this and the amount of money involved, it turned into a criminal investigation. The deputies questioned the girl that was accused of stealing this money. She told the authorities she got the money from a friend who moved away and gave it to her specifically to hand out at school. Oh, this is such a lame explanation. Girl, come on, come up with a better story than that. You know, tell them Joe Biden gave it to you as part of the student debt relief program. You're just giving it out a little early before the kids actually go to college. Now, the authorities also asked the students who accepted the money what transpired. They told deputies that the little girl claimed it was her grandmother's money and she had permission to give it away. (laughs) Grandma says it's okay. (laughs) Grandma won the lottery. This is an early Christmas present from me to you. Ah, Remember me. I'm going to be running for homecoming queen in a few years. It says here some of the students who received cash... Didn't even know the child at all, which is even more shocking. (laughs) She's handing it out to anyone she bumps into. Oh, man. You run into her in the bathroom that day. Hey, uh, you want $300 just for the hell of it? No, okay, okay. This poor young girl is now facing felony charges for grand theft. Oh, my goodness. Are they going to prosecute? I suppose it's up to the grandma to press charges. I I doubt that's going to happen if they get all the money back. The deputies and officials at the school are trying to retrieve this cash. They found about $2,500 left in the teenager's backpack. Wow, so she gave out over ten grand. One student, student handed in $200, and one brought $500 back to the office. The sheriff's office and school officials are asking parents to check with their children to see if they received any of the stolen money and to please return it. Oh, what a major ethical dilemma to find yourself in as a 13-year-old with $500 in cash on you. And they're saying, anyone got the free cash? Please return it. I'm like, oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I could use a new PlayStation, y'all. And of course, this is Florida, so a lot of these kids are going to need that bail money in about five years. <laughs> 
A one-legged Florida man who goes as Ponce de Leon was arrested with a gun. They always got these cockamamie nicknames in Florida. Last week I covered a story. The guy's name was Hercules. In this story, we have a one-legged man known by the alias Ponce de Leon because he fancies himself a conquistador. And, of course, if you're a conquistador, you must walk around the neighborhood with a gun. And that's what he was doing. He was arrested uh, with the gun while getting into an altercation over a dog. Ponce de Leon is 62 years old, a resident of a place called Lady Lake, which sounds lovely, but I'm sure it's not. Ponce de Leon, according to the report, was antagonizing a dog with a friend of his, probably another conquistador. A neighbor named John asked Ponce de Leon and his friend to please leave the dog alone. That's when Ponce de Leon punched him. Ponce de Leon then jumped into his car and drove off, nearly running over the neighbor. The neighbor got into his vehicle and followed Ponce de Leon, which is a very risky maneuver. At one point, he used his vehicle to block Ponce de Leon's vehicle, and that's when Ponce de Leon got out and pushed him down. Uh, Ponce de Leon was arrested on charges of battery and aggravated assault, of course. When the police arrived on the scene, Ponce de Leon, quote, threw himself onto the ground to avoid being handcuffed. Seems like a strange maneuver. Don't they usually put you on the ground to handcuff you anyways? Seems like he just kind of skipped a step. Ponce de Leon refused to stand up. The report noted that the deputy was aware that Ponce de Leon is missing a leg. (laughs) That's right, I forgot, he's missing a leg. (laughs) He can't stand up if he's missing a leg, right? I I don't know what's going on here. How do you deal with a guy missing a leg during an arrest? Apparently the deputies made him stand and he was hopping on one leg. (laughs) They questioned him and searched his vehicle. (laughs) I guess you don't have to worry about him running away. In the car, they found an unloaded Walther firearm and an unloaded magazine. A background check revealed that Ponce de Leon's concealed weapon permit is currently suspended. They also noted that Ponce de Leon was arrested in 2019 over a road rage incident. Wow, this Ponce de Leon on one leg, he doesn't let that stop him from terrorizing the scene. Now, the irony in all of this is, if you don't know your history, Ponce de Leon is a Spanish explorer and quistador known for leading the very first official European expedition to Florida. So, in a way, we have Ponce de Leon to thank for Florida Friday. A Florida teenager won the 2022 Python Challenge. A 19-year-old South Florida man captured a total of 28 Burmese pythons during a 10-day competition that was created to increase awareness about the threats these invasive snakes pose to the state's ecology. Uh, Matthew Concepcion was among the 1,000 participants from 32 different states, including Canada and Latvia, who participated in this annual python challenge. Uh, The total number of unwanted pythons removed was 231. This is all run by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Now, for his efforts, the young Concepcion was awarded $10,000, which is the ultimate grand prize, courtesy of the Everglades Foundation. He then passed out that cash at his school the next day. Just kidding. We also have someone named Dustin, who won 1500 for removing the longest python at about 11 feet. Concepcion told the media that he's been hunting pythons for about five years now, and he typically looks for them at night because that's when they're on the move. He uses his vehicle lights to spot them on warm roads. I don't know what that's all about. I guess they like the warmth of the roads. It seems like a dangerous hobby, if you ask me. Concepcion also likes to walk the canals using a flashlight to probe the underbrush. Smaller snakes are so well camouflaged that he looks for their shadows cast by the flashlight beam, he told the newspaper. Larger snakes are easier to find, he says. Here's a quote from him. Well, they will have a slightly purple tint to them, these uh, pythons. They're really quite beautiful, I think. Mr. Concepcion is going to use some of his earnings from this annual python competition to buy some powerful lights for his truck so he can find more snakes so he's not gonna take the money and move out of florida after all he's gonna stay there and keep hunting snakes even though there's no 
competition involved. <laughs> He's just something that he just does on the weekends. Here's a quote from the South Florida Water Management District Governing Board member, Alligator Ron. Ooh, Alligator Ron says, Our python hunters are passionate about what they do, and they care very much about Florida's precious environment. We are removing record numbers of pythons, and we're going to keep at it. That's right. Now, Burmese pythons aren't protected except by Florida's anti-cruelty law. So the participants in this competition have to document that each of their pythons was killed humanely. I'm not sure what that means. I guess they get a priest to read them their last rites. They give them a last meal. And then they kill them humanely. Now, you're probably wondering, how big can these pythons get, man? Well, earlier this year, a team of biologists hauled in the heaviest Burmese python ever captured in the state of Florida. The female python weighed at 215 pounds, was nearly 18 feet long, and had 122 developing eggs as well. I can't imagine living in this place. (laughs) It's like 18 feet long pythons in your backyard, huh? Are you okay, Florida, huh? You okay? Florida man, Florida man, so what, so what, so what's Florida man? A Florida man named Danger ran an unlicensed post-op recovery house. We got another great nickname, guys. Let's see if Danger's doing some stuff that's more degenerate than Ponce de Leon. The police in Hialeah arrested a man who's been accused of operating an unlicensed post-operative surgical recovery house. His name is Danger Del Campo. Uh, Mr. Danger, our Florida man, is 39 years old and faces 70 counts of operating an assisted living facility without a license. One for each night each patient would have spent at their home. That's a long time running this post-op facility. I don't know how you get people to go to your place when your name is Danger. If someone named Danger is like offering to take care of me, I'm like, nah, no thank you. That's, I'm okay with that. What? What's wrong? You don't want to come to the Danger Discount Healthcare Clinic? You can stay on the back porch. Don't worry. I got a gurney. <laughs> Ridiculous. Now, according to the Florida media, there's a lot of unlicensed post-op recovery homes in South Florida. This is proven to be a danger, they say. Uh, they've interviewed many women who have described unsanitary conditions at various homes they stayed in after recovering from cosmetic surgeries. Why would you stay at places like this? Are you all right? I mean, at that point, just stay in your own living room. (laughs) It's going to be better than this. The police responded to a tip about the property. And uh, they searched the trash at the home first and found numerous blood-soiled pads, discarded gloves, and pieces of compression socks, which are consistent with supplies that one wouldn't ordinarily find in a post-operative recovery house. After they were given full consent to search the property, they found eight ladies in different stages of recovery inside the home. Also, a nurse named Sayonara told (laughs) Sayonara, that's great, (laughs) Sayonara, that's the perfect name for a nurse operating in a home where you're recovering, but you're probably going to die at some point during the recovery. Don't worry, Nurse Sayonara is here to assist you all the way to heaven. Say Sayonara. Now, the detectives interviewed Sayonara. She said that she assisted the patients in bathing, dressing, eating, toileting, personal hygiene, and giving them their medication as well. And the patients all corroborated this. They said the same thing. They also said they were being charged about $1,500 for their stays at this home. Of course, they also arrested Danger for running this unsanitary pop-up recovery home. I mean, what's this guy's deal? He's like, I got this home and Airbnb won't approve my application to (laughs) to rent out the rooms. Hmm, I know what I'll do. I'll run a healthcare center. And then, of course, I don't know how you drop your loved one who's in recovery at a place like this. <laughs> Doesn't that strike you as suspicious that there's a Kia on some cinder blocks in the front yard? A Florida man told the police that it's not a problem. He's allowed to carry meth. A Florida man was arrested Wednesday after he was found in possession of some methamphetamine. I assume he also had on his person some drug paraphernalia. My favorite word, paraphernalia. During this arrest, the Florida man told the officer to call the FBI because, according to him, he has some sort of special permission to carry meth. Yeah, man, I got a permit, man. Call the FBI. They know I passed the exam. I'm allowed to open carry meth anywhere I want in Florida. That's right. (laughs) Special case, special case. 
Florida man Robert Lawson, age 50, was loitering near a wooded area close to a business when he was approached by a deputy. He consented to a search during the encounter with the deputy. A small baggie containing a gram of a crystal substance that, of course, tested positive for methamphetamine was found in his pack of cigarettes. In one of his grocery bags, the officer found a used syringe with a brown liquid residue. Hmm, sounds to me like they also found some paraphernalia. According to the arrest report, after being read his rights, Florida man Lawson demanded that the deputy make a couple of extra phone calls, one of those to the FBI. He said also call the St. Petersburg Police Department because these organizations can verify for you that I have a permit. I'm allowed to carry meth. Now, in case you're wondering if the deputy actually called the FBI to ask if Mr. Lawson is allowed to carry methamphetamine, the deputy did not. The deputy arrested him. He was charged with felony drug possession and a misdemeanor possession of drugs. Say it with me. Paraphernalia. Now, not surprisingly, this isn't Florida man Lawson's first run in with the law. His past convictions include trespassing, battery, consuming alcohol in a city park. I wonder if he's suggested that they make some calls for some other transgressions like, yes, or no, I'd, I've kidnapped these children, but I have a permit to carry the kidnapped children. Call the FBI. They'll verify it with you. I got a permit for the kids. You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. Too difficult. No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. Yay! Oh, we had some fun, didn't we? I hope you enjoyed that Florida Friday episode. Thank you for sending me Florida articles. Those that did, I appreciate that. Always makes my job easier. I hope you're having a nice weekend or you're you're about to or you had one. I'd like to give some love to someone who left me a great review on Amazon. This is a person that goes by user Nivron. Nivron gave me five stars, wrote great podcast. And then wrote, I start my weekdays off listening to Weird AF News, and I love it. It's funny, educational, and you get to hear all the -the out-of-this-world news. I'm a Floridian, so when you speak of these weirdos in Florida, all I could do is laugh, because I know we're a different breed. Thanks for the laughs in the morning. Hope nothing but the best for you. Isn't that a lovely message from a Florida man? I'm so pleased. And so appropriate. That it came in just in time for the Florida Friday episode. So nice to get a review from a Florida man who gets it, who gets me. Nivron, we're we're pulling for you, man. We hope you're okay. Watch out for the pythons, all right? Where's the angry Florida man, by the way? I want to do a request from the angry Florida man. I haven't heard from you in a long time, bro. I hope you're still alive. Did we lose him in Hurricane Ian? I'm very concerned. Eaten by a python, perhaps? Angry Florida man, if you're hearing me, man, just please call the show. We miss you. That being said, if you'd like to call the show yourself, it's 646-450-2012. I'll publish some phone calls at the end of this if you'd like to stick around. If you want to support the show, you can tell a friend to listen to Weird AF News. Isn't that nice? Tell them I got some pretty good reviews, and some of them have five stars, so it must be okay. (laughs) You know, Got a few five-star reviews. It must be okay. If you guys want to support me monetarily, and you don't have to do much, um, you can join the Patreon for as little as like two bucks a month. That's like buying me half a cup of coffee here in Los Angeles. Go to patreon.com slash weirdafnews, or download the Patreon app on your smartphone. Do a search for Weird AF News. It'll come right up. Join the Patreon. Or go to weirdafnews.com and click on the Patreon banner. When you join the Patreon, you get also access to a lot of extra weird content that I routinely put in there. A lot of weird stuff that I come across in my life, uh, stuff that I like that uh, isn't appropriate for the podcast or it doesn't fit on there and because of some other reason. So I just put it in there in the Patreon. So there's a lot of crap in there. Keep you busy. And maybe you don't care about that. You just want a good feeling knowing that you're supporting this amazing production that I have going on in a closet. Have you seen the videos of me in the closet? Psst, good stuff, baby. Good stuff. All right. I love you guys. Take care. Hey, Josie. I was just calling to give you my two cents on the story about the trans volleyball player here in Indiana. If the schools don't offer 
that sport and a particular gender, they have to let the kids play. For example, we've had numerous instances where girls were trying out for football. Sometimes they even make the football team because there's no girls' football team. When I was in school, there was no boys' volleyball team, so I wanted to play volleyball. So I tried to get on the the girls' volleyball team in high school, but they were on to me. They uh, created a after-school sand volleyball tournament that was co-ed, so they were able to get around letting me play on the girls' volleyball team that way. But I don't see how this should be any different. If there's not a boys' volleyball team, they should let anyone play on the girls' team, regardless of gender identity. Hey, sorry, me again. And I totally, every time you their machine picks up, I'm afraid you're answering and I'm waking you. So, silly, East Coast worry. But, oh my goodness, why aren't we calling little girls, little girls, and little boys, little boys? It is not cisgender. I am, I was a girl, and then I became a woman. And that is something that is not an easy thing to endure. So let's not think that any argument against biological fact, women cannot, cannot produce the hormone required to build the muscle mass a man can until she is 25. Whether or not she decides that her gender was inappropriately assigned at, or at yes, it cannot be done. I, the argument is ridiculous and it's very upsetting. And girls have had to endure a lot of BS throughout the history of whenever, whatever, like since written history. Feel free not to publish my, when I sound stupid on these, if you're going to publish or whatever. First time caller, I suck. And we are also mixing up gender identity, gender, what biological functions your body has for the continuation of humankind with sexual identity for the fact that when one child is, before this bullshit came out, children used to be almost fluid with their gender identification. They would dress up like mommy if they were, they would wear mommy's shoes if they were a boy, or they would wear daddy's clothes if they were a little girl. It is they are figuring out the world around them until a very specific age, and then they become entering into not only figuring out how the world is, how they react within it, and then their peer shit starts. And that adolescence is not a time to be encouraging absolutes or exploring those absolutes in the guise of gender identification, but actually being sexual experimentation, sexual identity, um, finding a sexual self within the self that you haven't even figured out yourself until well after puberty. So that is, that's a ridiculously young age. Before adulthood, before our brains are getting ready to be full and complete and whole and all loaves, frontal. Yay! Hi, Jonesy. It's Abby. Um, I have had a cold all week, and I still have a cold, so I probably sound terrible. Um, so I'm just catching up, and I seriously want to know, is this cat mayor thing real, like, or is that from the onion? Like, how, who, why, like, did they really remove the cat from office because of a cat and abuse scandal and, like, scandalous photos i'm just very i'm very confused by this and i need to know like if this is real and like what what why do people have time what are they doing if they have time to like be tying ribbons around cats necks in italy as the sheriff i don't know um also 
Hi, this probably isn't funny. It's kind of funny. I tried to take a, um, like, a nice, relaxing Airbnb tiny house retreat for myself to, like, write and read and relax um, last weekend. And I ended up having a very traumatic experience. Um, I went out on the porch and um, saw something moving behind the trash can. And so I was trying to, you know, relax and enjoy the morning. And I will, I go over and there's this deer just dying, injured, large deer. Um, and I ended up having to call, like, Wildlife 911 of Scioto County, um, which apparently has, like, happens. It, it's a thing. And they didn't get back to me. Apparently, it's not the same as human 911. They get back to me for three hours, and they were basically like, okay, we'll send someone out to shoot it. And I've been, like, crying with this injured deer for three hours, and they were like, okay, I want to send someone to shoot it. And I was like, great. Um, so then finally this guy shows up with, like, this tractor thing to, like, scoop up my dying deer friend. Um, but thank God it died. Like, the deer died right before the guy got there, and I didn't have to listen to my dear friends get shot. Um, so that was my, that was my relaxing getaway, and I was like, I'm not even surprised. This is what happens to me. This is surprising. Um, anyway, <laughs> have a good, uh, Florida Friday. Bye.